Hi. Hi, I'm Paul Freeman, master's student in the education, in the education school at Trey University. And today I am doing a video to tell you all the things that I have enjoyed being here and all the things, some of the things I've learned in being here. Uh, one thing I need to tell you, I'm in the education program, but I am not, I'm not a teacher, never have taught. But I've been in and around schools as a volunteer. I did have taught some summer school as far as uh, teaching school in the church for storytelling. So, I, but outside of that, I haven't had, done that in any teaching to say to any professional, any professional degree. But right now, I like to get started, and I like to talk about the things that I learned at at Strayer. Now, I have five boards here, so because I know I'm not going to be I, just in case I can't remember everything I'm trying to say. So I'll probably I'll be checking them out just to make sure I'm on point. Okay, first thing I'm going to talk about is 501, which was the learning theories. That was the first course I took at Strayer, and <clears throat> first thing I learned was was the aspect of learning the learning theories, and I've learned that there were behaviorists who thought that <clears throat> stimulus external environment was very important, which means the environment in which people are in was very important for learning. That's how they felt. Humanists like Maslow, who said that, number one, if a child is hungry, he's not going to be able to do anything. Maslow's whole thing is that you have to have all the things necessary in life in order for you to be successful. And I'd like to show you this, the Maslow chart because he's been in every school I've been in, and I'd like to show you this as we go into the theory. Maslow said that you have to have food, you have to have psychological needs, you know, you got... You have to have safety. If there's bullies in the school, you're not going to learn. You have to have a sense of belonging. If someone cares about you, you're going to learn. And if you have self-esteem, you're not going to have a problem learning. And that brings on self-actualization, which means if you've got all these things, you're self-actualized to know that you can be the best that you can be in your life by operating under the system. Now, along with that system, along with the theories in education and learning was constructivists like uh, Love, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Dewey, and Puget. Now Dewey, Dewey, these gentlemen felt that education was a continuous kind of learning experience, meaning that as you continue to live, you will continue to learn. That's the way they felt about it. And that was the learning theories I think that I learned in 501, was all of these things were so important for the learning to be for in the learning theory. And then we, I went into educational research methods and we had a paper to do on that, the qualitative, quantitative or qualitative. I went with qualitative because I know that that meant the best. You want to do the best and it was, it's not about numbers. So now I, I checked on a guy named Jason E. Clark and some of the things that he wrote that were very, very powerful for qualitative Education is empower teachers to identify problems in the classrooms so that they can resolve them. Another thing is apply a process of systematic inquiry to discover solutions to problems. It means if we got problems, we got a way we can figure them out. And another thing was to share information with other schools, other educators, and other teachers because you know, the more we share, the more we share education among ourselves, the more we learn. Now the next thing I learned on this on this class was I'm going to the next board here was teacher leadership and involved teachers from instruction to technologists. Learn pedagogy. Learn the politics of education. I think that has a lot to do with teacher leadership. Another thing that has to do with teacher leadership is teachers have to be, have to be, I would say, have to be something, something like extroverts. They have to be ready to go out. They have to be able, you got to show children love, I believe this. I think when children believe that they are loved, that's the best leadership I think a teacher can have is showing a student that you can learn anything I want to teach you. Believe me, I love you, not because just because you're one of my students and I want you to be the best that you can be. I think that's what I received from teacher leadership. I had leadership in global education. I thought this was great because we dealt with Finland. We, and we did a thing on Finland which broke my heart as far as, as far as the United States is concerned. Because in Finland, the students go to school four hours a day. 
they have an, they go to lunch every day, and by the way, they have real lunch, not kind of food. We, another thing is, there's no student in Finland that speaks less than three nine, foreign languages. Some speak six, seven, eight. Another thing about I liked about their education system was everybody gets a fair education. It doesn't matter the poor child or whether it's the kings or the queen or whoever it is. All those children get equal education. And their system is we educate the kids together so that in the years to come, maybe the rich kids will become friends with the poor kids and that will bring about a wholesome society. I think that was the strongest thing that I can bring to you from teacher leadership is that if we're together and we're on the same page, we can get the best thing done for our children. Then we went to contemporary issues in education, which I like this because the National Arts Education Association, let me say the National Arts Association of Education did a research. And you know what they wanted to know? They wanted to know how was the best way to give kids the kind of education where every child would get a great education and be educated to the fullest of his intelligence. Now they found out that if we had art, music, which means piano, chorus, still music, if we had stage, if we had storytelling, if we kept all of those creative factors and put physical education up here too because they don't do that in schools a lot like they do it used to. But if we had all of these things in all school systems, now research has said when kids have all of these things in schools, they all grade better. Now if we want to go back to Maslow, let's say we got Maslow here, we got all the things that Maslow said we need, and we've got all of these things here for kids in school, we've got a winning hand. And that's what needs to be done. And I don't want to get off tack here because my next thing is education assessment. And it's teaching well. That's what education assessment is. The teaching done as well as it should be. In assessing education, uh, do we have the kind of quality equipment? Do we have the kind of books we need? Do we have the kind of subjects we need for this quality? And all we have, the ultimate goal is learning, inspiring students. And to an appreciation and a desire for education. That's what we have to do in assessment. We've got to teach these students, they, we've got to have our students learn to love education. They've got to want to come to school. They've got to love going to school. And a desire to continuous education, to, to keep continuous education going in their lives forever. As Dewey said, we want to keep doing that. We don't want to stop doing that. And in the diversity in education, which was designed to talk about diversity. And one of the things I remember when we were in the subject was uh, it's hard to bring about diversity if you don't bring about unity. And when I say that, I mean if you're in a neighborhood and you are a diverse, diverse person, make sure you know your neighbors because we are trying to get to a oneness here. And in order to get to that oneness, we need for everybody to be on the same page. I know I was just looking at the internet the other night. I was so upset. Uh, I would say, I would say, so upset, but I was really, I, I, it disturbed me that the white children in Michigan were hollering at the Hispanic kids about build the wall, build the wall, build the wall. And I just think that this kind of negative conversation is not good for diversity. We need to know that, as far as diversity is concerned, I really believe, and even during the studies that I had in class, that parents have to be more involved in schooling. Communities have to be more involved in schooling. If we don't get everybody in that community involved, we don't get those parents involved, we're not going to get the pluralistic education system that we want in diversity in education. Then we had instruction design and development. This is, this is one of the most phenomenal classes that I had because mnemonics, schoolhouse rock videos, which we had to paper in, and it was just teaching kids how to have an internalized information which brings on emotional support for the atmosphere, which is a good atmosphere, appraisal and positive, constructive feedback, all of these things are designed with that. And, and, and remember, one thing about design and development, we must make sure that instrumental resources are always available. We must have all the tools we need 
in technology in order to bring this forth and develop it to the best that it can be. Now on the next thing I had here was 541 technology tools to manage learning. Let me tell you, this was one of my favorite classes because I don't, it was not even now I consider myself that much of a, of a technologist in terms of all the things that's available. But one thing I learned about this was that we are now in a social media, which I know, and what happens with this is we have the availability now to talk to people everywhere and communicate. Now this is sensuous <laughs> uh, learning, and it's, it comes, you have to, this was email and discussion forms and file exchange. Now another side of that, you have the uh, the uh, Sucronius, and that's in real time, folks. That's in real time. That's where you, that's the screen sharing. That's a short message service, and the communication on that is social networks. We have group tools. We have Facebook. We have all of these things in technology now to help us manage education. Now, alongside of all of these things here, guess what? Guess what, folks? You can go to Khan Academy. You can go to ABC Mouse, you can go to YouTube, teach